Well hello everybody and welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Today I'm going to make an Earl Grey uh, tea loaf cake or Earl Grey uh, tea bread and this is based on a recipe from uh, Mary Berry and it's also on the BBC food website and I'll speak more about that in a moment. Um, but I got some positive uh, feedback from my Earl Grey tea cake which I made so I thought that I would do um, a more dense and heavy bread type cake uh, using the Earl Grey as well. Now, uh, just a, a word about the recipe from Mary Berry. She did it in a video um, when she was visiting uh, Goodwood House. And in that uh, video, she mentioned the oven temperature is 150 degrees Celsius with a fan. But on the BBC Food website, uh, the uh, oven is uh, preheated to 150 degrees Celsius, 130 degrees Celsius with a fan. So that's what I'm doing. I've preheated to 150 degrees Celsius, 130 degrees Celsius with a fan, 300 Fahrenheit. Um, and I'm keeping it at lower temperature as opposed to what Mary actually said on the video so that it doesn't overbake. I can bake it for longer if necessary, but I can't bake it for shorter if it's overbaked, basically. So, uh, with that said, we'll go on to the ingredients. And for this, I have um, 300 millilitres, which is one and a quarter cups of hot Earl Grey tea. You can have that as strong as you like, basically. 175 grams, 175 grams, one cup plus two and a half tablespoons of currants here, and the same amount, 175 grams, one cup plus two and a half tablespoons of sultanas. I have 275 grams, one and a half cups plus a third of a cup of self-raising flour. Now, if you only have plain flour, you can use that but you need to add into the plain flour uh, 11 grams or th uh, three and three quarters teaspoons of baking powder and you need to sift them together to get the baking powder mixed through. Then another uh, strange thing about many of Mary's recipes is that she uses large eggs quite often. So this is one large egg, which would be extra large in the USA. Now the weight of this egg out of the shell is um, 56 grams. If you only have a medium egg or a large egg in the USA, I think you can use that because there will be some excess moisture from uh, when we soak uh, the fruit and uh, that will make things fine. I also have 225 grams, which is one cup plus two tablespoons, of light brown sugar. Mary says to use light brown muscovado sugar, but I don't have that and um, I don't think the, the difference is significant. So that's all the ingredients. And the first thing we need to do is to soak the fruit. So we'll put the currants and the sultanas into the tea. And what we need to do is to soak those overnight. and uh, they will become nice and juicy as the uh, most of that liquid gets absorbed into the fruit. Now, I actually have the one that I soaked overnight available to use. So that's all nice and juicy and there's still a little bit of liquid in, as you can see. So that's what I'm going to use now. So I'll put that into a larger bowl and I'm going to add in the sugar and the flour and the egg but I'm going to beat my egg a little bit before I add it in. Like that. And then I'm going to mix everything together. Uh, 
until it forms a thick batter basically. We just need to make sure that there's no dry flour and I'll just scrape down the edge of the bowl And that's good like that. So then I'm going to put that into a two pound loaf tin. And I have a two pound loaf tin here, which I have greased and lined with parchment paper. And with that in my loaf tin, I'm just going to spread that over to level it off. And then I'm going to just bang it on the counter but to avoid too much noise, I'll do it on a towel. And that's good like that. So I'm going to put that into the oven and I'm going to bake it for about an hour and three quarters. Um, and I'm going to uh, check it after an hour and a quarter, 75 minutes, um, just to see what it looks like. and. Uh, if it needs longer baking, then I will leave it in uh, for 15 minutes and then 15 minutes and test it. And if it seems to be browning too much on top before it's baked through, I will cover it with some aluminium foil um, after that hour and a quarter, basically. So um, once it has baked through and a skewer poked into the center comes out clean, I take it out of the oven and leave it in the tin for 10 minutes and then I'll transfer it to a wire rack to cool completely. And once it has cooled completely, I'll come back and we'll have a taste of it. I baked my Earl Grey tea loaf cake for one hour and 40 minutes. I tested it after an hour and 15 minutes and there were a couple of little crumbs on the skewer. So I left it in uh, for uh, another 25 minutes um, just to be on the safe side. Then I took it out of the oven and left it to cool in the tin for uh, 10 minutes before turning it out onto a wire rack. So it's uh, slightly warm still, uh, but it's mainly cooled down. So I've cut a slice and I've put some butter on that slice and I'll show you what it looks like. So it's baked up very nicely, as you can see. The fruit is nicely distributed throughout um, and the cake grows up a little, or the, the loaf cake grows up a little bit. So I'll have a taste of this piece with the butter on. very very good the fruit is lovely and juicy i can taste um, the earl grey as well that gives it a nice flavor um, and so this is more bread like than cake like um, 
but it's very, very good and it's perfect with a, a cup of tea, just sliced with a little uh, bit of butter on it. So, um, I should mention that again, I cooked at 150 degrees Celsius, 130 Celsius with a fan, 300 Fahrenheit, which is what the written recipe said, as, to, as opposed to what Mary Berry said in the video, which was uh, 20 degrees higher, basically, in, in Celsius. So, um, it baked up well under those circumstances. Um, that will be it for this recipe. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me the thumbs up below and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the top right hand corner of the screen, there'll be an eye that you can click on and that will take you to a link for the recipe and I'll put a link below the video as well. And I'll be back with another recipe in the very near future. So until then, happy baking.